Are you crazy? Or are you just mad? Hello, 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 hello! hello. Welcome to the Mad Musicians Against Depression podcast where we discuss the latest news, research and hot topics surrounding mental health. I'm Thomas Marr and I'm joined in studio by my beautiful co-host, award-winning singer, songwriter and presenter, Indira. Indira, hello again. Hello there. How are you feeling? Well, I'm not depressed. You're not depressed? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a remarkable recovery then, isn't it? No. Yeah? I'm not depressed, I'm just mad. You're just mad, yeah, we know that. Well, anyway, dear, welcome back to another Thank episode you. of the Mad Pod podcast. It's great to have you here again. Thank you. And you've been journaling your um, your your accounts of your um, therapeutic journey at the moment? Yeah, I have been actually because I'm on this mission mm-hmm. to um, to force the hand of my psychiatrist because I am desperate to try ketamine mm. and uh, not the one I use uh, the ho- I've got Party I've track. got three <laughs> I've got three horses and two ponies and it's used as a, an animal tranquilizer. Oh, is that where you're getting it from? No, to put horses down <laughs> so I'm, I'm a bit cautious about mm-hmm. this one but having said that um, it's supposed to be helping alleviate depression mm-hmm. so I'm very keen on trying it, but I have assured him that I will give him a um, an update on how I'm doing. Uh, I've suddenly flipped in my brain for some reason lately a determined um, thing going on in my brain that I have to get everything right because I want to do what I want to do. Yeah. And this is the only way. So. I've been really focused. It makes me nervous. My medication I take uh, for alcohol uh, addiction does not uh, feel great. The anti-craving. It doesn't feel great. I have uh, very vivid, uh, weird dreams at night and very disturbed sleep and all the rest of it. But having said that, it does keep things at bay and I'm really desperate to keep it that way for a while mm-hmm. forever basically <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's putting a lot of pressure on myself now to make it all happen mm-hmm. I think I've put a lot of pressure on myself but that's how it is what can you do well, it's, well look um, when we spoke about originally you were, you were quite nervous about the whole idea of taking on ketamine or giving it a, sh- a, a try you seem a bit more open to it now well you keep shoving it down my throat. I have no choice. Uh, every day I hear ketamine about 10 times from Thomas, just so you all know. And uh, now I'm just going to take it to shut him up. <laughs> 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 okay, just load it on. Just load it on. Just tell him to shut the hell up. <laughs> so you've been in contact with your vet then, not psychiatrist. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, dear me. But that's good. I'm, I'm glad, obviously, you know, because you you've got to sometimes to achieve uh, your goals. You have to put your, your anxieties and fears aside. You just have to go and do it. And, yep. you know, because obviously the benefits way, way, way outweigh the Out, negatives. Way outweigh. Outweigh, outweigh the negatives. Way, outweigh, 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 outweigh. You know, and it's, it's, I think with way, ketamine, it's, way, it's either way, works way. or it doesn't work. And if you look at the research, over 80% of people respond very, very well to it. That's a very, very high ratio. Yeah, I'm, I am, a demographic I am of people. very uh, convinced on that to the article I'm going to read today also. But there's only one part about it that I worry about is uh, that I have, uh, it, it, that some people say it could affect your memory. And I don't want to have Alzheimer's or something early. That, well, so until they prove it doesn't. <laughs> well, look, you say that, but... If you read the label of any antidepressants you're taking, tell me where it doesn't say something like that or yeah, worse. Yeah, I know, I know. But I did run that by my uh, psychiatrist, actually, I did. Mm-hmm. And he said it really, um, it, it is not going to bring on anything earlier or later in your life. It yeah, of really course. doesn't. I totally agree. But they have to cover yeah. all... Uh, but that's just off warning labels that have to have it on it. They're covering their bases. Look at with the, um, with the COVID vaccines and stuff, like all the warnings that came with. 
And that was yeah. like, you know, billions of people have taken that. So everything comes with a warning, penicillin, aspirin, everything comes with warnings. Fortunately, I don't like medication, but fortunately, but I've been, it's one of those things. It's my karma. I don't like to put a tablet in my mouth. Since I was a kid, I'd be hurt, injured, anything. And they'd say, take a painkiller. And I'd say, no, I don't want one. I don't How want How could you one. manage to fit a tablet into your mouth? Oh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's better than a computer. It's an iPad Air. (laughs) (laughs) It is better than a computer. I did try swallowing my computer, but then... (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But it had megabytes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and you're supposed to be depressed, eh? (laughs) are you? Joker. (laughs) So on that note, so on today's show, we have four excellent topics we're going to talk about. And we're going to play the final song from the Mad 2024 album. It's not the final song on the album, it's actually the opening track of the album. And it's the, actually, it's the jingle, it's the theme tune to our Mad Pod podcast. And it's called Rise Up, a song I wrote myself and produced and uh, very, very proud of it. So we're going to actually play that. And it's very good, I have to say. Yeah, it's a very good song, yes. Uh, If you say so yourself. I do say it myself. Actually, it's one of my favourite tracks. They're, they're maybe my favourite track. What about the songs I write then? Are they not your favourite tracks? You, you, You write songs? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm writing don't, one don't, about Trump actually yeah, Donald Gimp Nelly the elephant Pat your Trump <laughs> and say <saying> goodbye <laughs> to the circus <laughs> The gingerbread fat man mm, yeah, Oh no, no, that's politically incorrect isn't it? <laughs> no? He's yellow Oh, he's, he's orange. Yellow. He's orange, sorry, he's orange, yeah. Aren't you glad he's, orange, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's running for their elections, not ours? <laughs> <laughs> running from erections. Yeah, that too. Stormy weather ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so today, on today's show, folks, we have four interesting topics, and which one of which Indira is going to open with is that ketamine is helping alleviate depression fast. And second topic, which I will read to you, is... Is TikTok a good platform to learn about anxiety? Our third topic, which will be, again, read by the wonderful Indira, is here's a uh, uh, psychiatry podcaster, Dr. David Pruder, on everyday habits that may be affecting your mental health. That's the third one. And my final one will be, why venting when you're mad just makes things worse. <gasps> you mean I can't vent? You've been venting all your life. You're just yeah. like fresh air. I'm a ventilator. Every time, pa- every time you pass me, I almost fall over. I'm a ventilator. You're a ventilator, yeah. Like the Terminator, I'm you've a just ventilator. Been, you've just been breathing through life, you have, haven't you? <laughs> huh? Right? You know, actually, I think this is more of a comedy show than an actual help to anybody. Spoof. <laughs> it's a spoof to all those people out there trying to help people with mental Yeah, health. all of you who think you've got depression, you're actually tuning in to hear us make idiots of ourselves. Just reading the Looney Bins, <laughs> the Looney Bin podcast. Yeah. Right, Indira, okay. off you go. Okay, here we go. Ketamine is helping alleviate depression fast. Depression is a crippling problem that hijacks a patient's neurochemistry, often making it impossible to see the bright side. While many potential therapeutic applications exist, there has been a long-standing quarrel between treating depression chemically and through interventions like talk therapy. By the way, I can't do the talk therapy thing anymore. Done it for too many done years. It, yeah, yeah. While some Psychiatrists are advocates of both. No silver bullet seems possible for all people who suffer from this condition. Right. Other things seem certain, however. The post-World War II mentality of pulling yourself up by the bootstraps is not working, really isn't. Culturally, we've probably swung in other directions from not talking about our problems to over-emoting the social media I actually agree with to over talk it mm-hmm. sometimes. That said, exposure is arguably better than suppression. Absolutely. The new numerous online mediums for connecting with others is a boon in what was once a desert. Okay. Wow. Which is, they should call it an oasis. Mm-hmm. Ketamine has long been touted as a potential therapy for depression. Popularly used in animal tranquilizer in street has hall- hallucinogenic. But see, I don't even know what it is. That's how bad I do know what it is. A new study published in Nature shows that not only is ketamine a plausible plausible means to treating depression, but its ability to immediately stabilize patients makes a great value for those who might not have willpower to wait weeks for another pharmaceutical to kick in. Exactly. Um, This is not to imply 
Ketamine is a wonder drug. Its potentially damaging effects on memory and other cognitive functions is spurring researchers to investigate how it works in hopes of finding another similar course of treatment. But in the short run of results are promising. The research was conducted at the Peter O'Donnell Jr. Brain Institute in Dallas. One of the study's authors, Dr. Lisa Montiguer, Mm. state um, states now that we have a target in place we can study the pathway and develop drugs that are safely induce the antidepressant effect ketamine is responsible for blocking the n methyl d aspirate aspartate aspartate oh, aspartate receptor which causes an immediate alleviation of depressive effects while another m- metabolite in drug helps why do you always there. make these huge go on words? India you're doing well go on drug helps I'm not, I'm not the effects sneering or anything here no I know that believe me the seriously. drug helps the effects last for hours so is mm. this bloody <laughs> article the blockage is also what causes the hallucinogenic effects uh, so that's what's causing it the blockage yep. the Montegia is rapid results is extremely appealing for patients who want quick relief this is important for future research she says because the nmda receptor that is the target of ketamine is not involved in how other classical serotonin based antidepressants work our study opens up a new avenue of drug discovery the efficiency of ketamine is not new the world health organization includes the list of essential medicines so it's also included there mm-hmm. in 2013 Brent Miles began using it and after hearing about it on NPR to treat long history of bipolar disorder he tried regular infusions over a six month period willing to give it a shot considering the conventional pharmaceuticals had failed him over a period of decades god don't i know that <laughs> the therapist decades. the therapist started with new with a low dosage this was the first treatment and the low dose and it kind of wears off it's not like a crash or anything during the next treatment they boost up the level that you're given so it should start working successively staggering after that i started feeling a lot better miles eventually worked in weekly talk therapy when he could afford it The problem with ketamine he says it's expense 1500 for a total of six infusions I think that's money well spent dollars with the publication mm-hmm. of this study in nature and further accounts hopefully that will change in insurance com- companies need data before covering the drug ketamine in is prime for reimbursement and that's a good thing given that how much depression we seem to be combating right now I have to say that um, I'm willing t- to invest in it from my point of view definitely. But I haven't read the article of you read it before but does it give you any more confidence in actually now going ahead with the therapy? Yes, I mean I'm very keen on going ahead with it. Mm-hmm. I I'm trying my best to get a really good month of doing everything right in my head mm-hmm. and then going to my psychiatrist and saying right if I'm still feeling like I can't deal uh with certain things in my life then uh then I'm I'm going to have to force his hand because it is my decision at the end of the day. But he said he's willing to do, right? He said he's yeah. with you on this. Yeah, he yeah, is so with I me on this. Um he does worry about me because for him uh he you know it's his reputation on the line so but he realizes that I must have reached a point where I am. It's funny because I want to bring this up today is that people always think when you have a lot in terms of the world around you what's going on. This morning I woke up, put the news on and you know there was all this stuff going on in Palestine a lady had lost her her baby and this and that and she said why am I alive? Take me out of this hospital. I'd rather be dead. Mm-hmm. I don't even have a husband, my kids, nothing. I don't want to be alive. And I asked myself over and over I said look at you. Look at your life. Please focus on your life. How dare you say you have depression? And I sat back with my mug of coffee and I said, I don't choose to have depression. Depression has chosen me, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And it's a level of chemicals in my brain. And to be honest with you, I'm 
physically fit. I'm, you know, I I consider myself fairly intelligent uh, and definitely have an IQ and EQ above average. And yet I feel why on earth me? Well, you know what? It is me. And as much as my heart goes out to the people who are suffering more than me in different situations, we all have our journeys. We all have our wars. You're still suffering nonetheless. Regardless of you can't no comparison. put somebody else's problem. Yes, life over death, absolutely. So I do think I'm trying to justify to myself that it's okay that I have a problem and recognize it and give it importance. Whoever has a problem, give it importance. You're not any less than anybody else's problem. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, of course. And look, it's mental health is an illness like like cancer or or diabetes or. Yeah, exactly. heart disease like that you can't make there's no magic wand you can wave and make it go away you can't will it away it has to be treated and that's just the bottom line um, just before I finish up Nick I mean obviously you know there is obviously um, there's a S-ketamine form of ketamine available in the market which I was saying to you with a nasal spray which, which, yeah, which, what, which is, what was that about? I mean, it's ketamine but basically they've they've eliminated the or they've removed the um, psycho psychoactive. They've, they've removed the psychoactive um, in, um, ingredients out of it, so you don't get that high, or you don't you don't get that separation from your body. That that the, kind the, of, the, yeah. the, the disillusionment. You don't get that with it now. You just actually get the benefits from it. So that has progressed even more. So yeah, I just want to say that. So okay, thank you for and dear for that uh, article on ketamine. Thank Anyone you. Anyone listening in? A fewer. Obviously, if you think you need you, you need help beyond what you're getting at the moment, or you know, if you, you you're you're on a similar journey to Indira, there are options like ketamine and magnetic therapy and many other therapies out there that you can try. There's help for everybody, so don't think there's not. There is. Okay, so my article is is mental health TikTok actually giving you more anxiety? Here's what experts think: mental health TikTok is incredibly popular but in some cases may be causing more problems than it's curing. What to know about how to consume the content? All right, TikTok. I don't use TikTok myself, but anyway, it'd be interesting to know. Interesting article. TikTok is home to many things from innovative recipes to organizing hacks and beauty tutorials. It's also become a space for open conversations around mental health. Search anxiety or depression on TikTok and you'll find thousands of videos from experts and everyday people alike on symptoms, coping mechanisms and more. De- de-stigmatizing conversations around mental health has been a beneficial use of social media and has helped countless people prioritize and understand their own. However, experts are warning that consuming too much mental health contact content, especially from creators who aren't experts in the field, can be dangerous. Totally agree. Why TikTok can cause anxiety? The 20-30-second nature of TikTok videos doesn't allow for a full exploration of the complexities of mental health and the impact that mental health has on one's overall functioning, says Kevin Belcastro, the clinical director at the Mental Health Centre of San Diego. Instead, these sound bites of information provide individuals with sen- sensationalized or emotionally charged bits of information, which some individuals using TikTok take as being absolute truths about mental health. Proof of this problem is the algorithm. TikTok prioritizes more sensationalist content designed to grab your attention quickly that can lead to a higher rate of interaction with upsetting anxiety, inducing content like horror and debt. Oh, love, lovely. <laughs> I always, knew, yeah. I always knew TikTok was a bad thing. That's why I stay away from it. But your, but your, for your page can be a minefield if you're consuming relatively benign, benign content. For example, if someone interested in mental health watches a video of someone discussing their anxiety, you'll see another one shortly after and another and another. Dr. Allegra Nevins, a licensed therapist at Willingburg Therapy Group, tells people... Repeated viewing of this kind of content can lead to bigger issues. Self, self, self-diagnosis. What to know about self-diagnosis? There's been an uptick in self-diagnosis from social media, with one in four Americans having self-diagnosed themselves with a mental health disorder based on the information 
from Americans having self-diagnosed themselves with a mental health disorder based on information from, what are you doing? You're knocking something over there. You just no, put me off so my desk. I'm so sorry, but yeah, my so glasses are not working and I again. can't read anything. No, Tia. Sorry. Okay. Based on information from social media apps, according to a 2023 survey from mental health publisher, Tebra. The survey also reported that TikTok is one of the largest social apps responsible for self-diagnosis and mental health misinformation. Gen Z, in particular, is vulnerable to TikTok's inaccurate diagnosis because it's their app of choice. This is especially dangerous because zillennials suffer from mental health disorders at higher rates than previous generations and thus need more accurate and helpful information. It's not that you can't use TikTok for mental health information. There's nothing wrong with watching your favorite content creator talk about their attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and relating to their experiences. However, it's important to have this discernment and realize that identifying with your favorite influencer's experience doesn't mean you have ADHD or a mental health disorder, says Dr. Lyons, a licensed holistic psychologist and creator of the trauma learning platform, the Embody Lab. Personal narratives are just that, personal. No mental health condition, even anxiety, is universal. It has many different shapes, colours and manifestations and even theories behind it, Dr. Lyon tells people. And so it's really important to identify and think, oh, they're sharing this and let's, let's hear their story. And remember, not only, not every emotion or feeling is a symptom of something deeper. When self-diagnosis, diagnosing yourself, you run the risk of pathologizing logicalizing normal feelings. Dr. Nevin explains, we have emotions for a reason and they are not inherently bad. If we look at fear, for example, its function is to protect us from danger and serve as a source of motivation. If we completely rid ourselves of fear, what would happen if we were to encounter a bear in the woods? Yeah, flight or flight. <laughs> yeah. I know what would happen. The best way to consume mental health content. You cuddle them. Yes, of course. And they'd, cud- cuddly, and they'd yeah. cuddle us back, wouldn't they? Yeah, if they're koalas, otherwise they're yeah, grizzlies, exactly. then we've got a problem, right? Oh, yeah. God. That could be a very grizzly situation. Yeah, it is a grizzly situation. That said, you don't have to stop watching mental health TikToks. The app is a great resource for having vulner- vulnerable conversations about mental health and gaining more insight into what causes anxiety and depression, as well as coping mechanisms that have been successful for others. But... While its access, accessibility is great, it's also a beacon for misinformation and make it very hard to determine who is qualified to offer their expertise. So keep in mind that a, that a creator's experience with anxiety or depression is their own and be sure to watch videos from licensed professionals. Nevins recommends checking creators' credentials and researching their background if you want to take their advice seriously. And if you believe you have a mental health issue worth treating, look for an in-person therapist to, to discuss it further. Just be prepared to hear a diagnosis from them that might differ from the one you feel you're experiencing. Um, hmm. mm. That is very interesting. It is. You use TikTok in there, don't you? No, I don't. You don't? You don't no, use I it? I don't use TikTok. Oh, no, you're on Instagram, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I tend to use um, it for my work, really. And, and uh, now I, I try not to, to, to rub people up the wrong way on these things. But today I actually took a stand and did a political one, mm-hmm. which uh, I never do usually. Right. I stay away from politics on social media, but I actually hit it on all my So what Facebook rattled you case today? You did, you dumb me out of the pram? I don't know. I just, uh, I just looked at the world around me and I thought this is not right. You had to bark. I had to bark. At the bark, yeah. Yep. Your cage was rattled. Well, I couldn't, I can't, I can't handle it. You reacted. Yeah. I, you know, we put our eggs in all one basket and then Yahoo. Yahoo. Ne- Yahoo, we shouldn't be doing this. And, <laughs> and like, you know, what? what's going on here, honestly? And really? your favourite orange man. My God, you have all these... Yeah, no, I mean, he's in a stormy situation with Miss Daniels, but that's beside the point. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dearie me. You come up with all the good ones, Indira. Yeah, but you know what? Full of it today, aren't you? Well, she did call him the orange turd because someone said she's a toilet. And she said, well, she's 
she's a toilet, uh, like a, a person that's like a, a dirty toilet. And she said, I'd like to flush flush out that orange turd in that case. <laughs> <laughs> so that God. went down well with him. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> orange turd. Uh, she is funny. She's, um, absolutely, he's one... Ugly human being. I have to be honest about that. I don't yeah, like to say you anything about him. I have a, I have a, I have a theory. I have a theory that Melania Trump, uh, melanoma Trump. I was thinking is, exactly is, yeah, melanoma she's, Trump. Yeah. She's, um, she's. I think she's blind. Def. I think she has a white stick, but no one sees it. Yeah, she's definitely dumb, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Okay. Either that or really smart. <laughs> yeah, one or the other. We'll see you at the end of it all. Okay, yeah. so thank you, India. So. For no, that no. piece of useful, useful no, information. No, no, that was but your useful I wasn't talking about the article. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're talking about Trump. Yes. <laughs> okay. Trump, Mr. Gimp. Okay. Okay, so now on now to... Now my next so one. No, it's not your next one. It's the song. Oh, We're okay. playing the final song from the Mad 2024 okay. album. Okay. Because obviously we know this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes, it is. So, and I'm yeah. very aware this month. You're very aware, yes. Yeah. Ac acutely aware. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the final song on the album, which is actually the opening song, of the opening track of the album, is called Rise Up. And it was one that I uh, commissioned, written, wrote and produced in around, I think, Are you going to do a sit America. down after Rise Up? Yeah, I'm going to sit down, Rise Up, <laughs> call out. Rise to the moment. Yeah, right to the moment. We have to play some of your songs later on in later episodes, now that we finish this album. Yeah, because, you know, the, 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 yeah. The, now I'm beginning to feel a bit left out. You're a bit out. rattled, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now your cage is being <laughs> <sh> rattled. <laughs> yes. There you go. So here we go. Enjoy.
Wow, that was very good, sir. Oh, yes. The Mad Pod podcast. And? Anyone who didn't recognize that track, you must be stupid because that is the intro and outro to the Mad Pod podcast. But, but, but I'm but, sure but, you're all but, smart but, people but, but, and you got that. Of course we're smart. Yeah. That's why we're on the show and that's why they're listening yeah, to this show. Yeah, what a fantastic solo in that track by none other than the Mr. Ashley Cooper, who we're going to get on one day. He's going to talk about his five years in therapy. For, um, for he spent five years on the therapy and he's just finishing this next, this month or next month. Five years. Um, oh, that's for what, what therapy? Just that was for um, borderline personality disorder. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so he spent five years, so he's going to come in and talk about that. That's quite optimistic to think he's just borderline. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ash. <laughs> Ashley, you said her, Ashley. No, that, that's, that in itself says he's improving. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what way you look at it, right? right? Depends okay. what border and what line he's on. Okay, I have something I have to say. Now, I gotcha. have the wrong, my glasses are not working today, so in case I conk out halfway through this, Thomas will have to take over this article because I may not be able to read it. (laughs) So I'm going to give it a shot. Anyway, here we go. Daily routines that can help provide structure and certainly in a personal person's life, because let's let me tell you what this is all about. Psychiatry podcast by David Pruder on everyday habits that may be affecting your mental health. So um, I'm going to tell you what he's said in a nutshell, basically, that that our routines can help us either improve or not improve our life. But some of the little things we do every day, especially in an increasingly, increasingly modern world, can negatively impact our mental health. Dr. David Pruder, a licensed psychiatrist. Pruder. No, Pruder, who said in Psychiatry and Psychotherapy podcast, recently spoke with people the People, I guess, magazine about how everyday habits can lead to negative mental health and ways that you can start to train your brain, train your brain, train your to brain, break, train your brain to stop those routines to avoid micro negative throughout your day, my negatives during throughout your day. Here are four <sighs> areas of focus where you can, oh my god, this is going to hurt, can cut down your daily habits that you might not realize are impacting your mental health. Pruda suggests a major change in people can make in their daily lives is to limit their screen time. There have been a lot of studies to show that more than two hours a day of screen time is increasingly risk of depression, suicidal thoughts and all sorts of different poor mental health outcomes. Does this mean a psychiatrist can't look at his screen? The psychiatrist said... Windscreen, I don't know. and, And part of this is why people are not doing... What are people not doing when they're on their screens? They're not interacting with real humans. They're not, and they're not doing any exercise. This is true. Of course. Okay. One specific time of the day to focus on limiting your screen um, usage is late at night, Pruda says. That I agree. The sc- my husband always looks at his screen at a late thing, and I no wonder he's... Yeah, but he's addicted mm-hmm. to porn, so what can no, we do? No, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Stormy Daniels again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> your brain capacity, your, lim- uh, your ability to focus, concentrate, move forward in life, all of that is going to be impacted by your sleep, prudent notes. And I can tell you last night was not fun. Not only does starting... At a screen right before you go to bed. Oh, staring at a screen. Sorry, I told you my glasses are playing up. Before you go to bed, whether your phone, a television or any other device impact how much melatonin your body is producing. But the psychiatrist said that most people's brains become more impulsive at night, allowing anxieties and fears to move easily and dominate the person's headspace. This can disrupt the ability to fall asleep and evidence shows that the consistent sleep is key to a good mental health. God, I just want to take sleeping pills. That's my way out. (laughs) The psychiatrist says that it's a good idea to begin dimming your lights. You always tell me this, Mm -hmm. Thomas, and avoid using your phone about an hour before 
going to bed. Yeah, I'm going to put mine in the other room, like it says. It suggests putting your phone in another room to avoid being woken up. Yeah, there you go. What about your ex-husband? Inter- Can you put him in another room? Uh, yeah, he snores. Intermittently, when, <laughs> when a um, notification rings or you reach for the phone and then you wake up in the middle of the night. See, this is something I've stopped doing is I, I hide my phone from me. Mm-hmm. This is a good thing. Good. It's hard, though. Pruda admits, I empathize with anyone who's who has a hard time doing it and wants to binge on Netflix or something. Exercising. Hmm. Many people stop their routine exercise, develop anxiety and depression with mental health. Professional points out. I see that a lot of bikers, when they stop, Pruda said, they stop routinely biking or working out and... Biking? Why is it just biking? So it's and they, an example. they just feel awful. I agree. When I stop training, I, I hate I hate it. The pattern also is evident with many college and um, college age students when they're play, playing sports after high school. Puda recommends getting together with friends to do an outdoor activity and looking into joining a local recreational group sports team and stay alive and top of the physical health. See, my nephew does this, Daniel. He's he's parts of different groups after he started working. Where yeah. He plays football, this, that mm-hmm. and the other, bikes to work. Yeah. Ultimately, it impacts your mental health as well. Being part of a sports team is great for ADHD. I must tell Hala that <laughs> depression, anxiety, pretty much every mental health condition, Pruda says. Okay. Eating healthier is another way, major change that people can make in their daily lives that will give them positive impact on their mental health. Pruda says, I, I eat fairly healthily. Pre- well, I eat healthily. Pruda recommends limiting processed foods mm-hmm. and points to a 2017 study that shows that adopting a Mediterranean diet can help Reduction of depression for many people. That's what we're having tonight. Well, by you're the very way. good at adopting, anyway. What did I say? Adopting or adapting? Okay. He also notes that studies about how your bodies change over time and healthier eating habits are adopted show that there is a measurable impact on mental health as well. I'm sorry, I'm struggling, but honestly, my glasses aren't working. It's not. <laughs> Like it's your, it's, no, it's the screen isn't working. No, it's not that one thing has changed in your body. The psychiatrist says it's like tons of thousands of changes happen just by making one change. Wow, wow. that's very good. Wow. That's very good. This is where the magic happens. Like in lastly, the studio. lastly, uh, Pruda says focusing on connection with other people and, and and another major category to work on every day. Whether there is seeking out positive relationships or starting psychotherapy. Yeah, we're back again with that, which can help Your favorite people. Topic. I yeah, I know, which can help people better connect with other others. A lot of people I meet who have significant health problems, concerns have um, progressively become more detached from the world and the point they may be um, one person they have some connection with. So basically, you just got to find somebody you can connect with and work on all these things. Tom, do you want to take over? Hmm? Do you want to take over? Take over? Take over what Basically, take over the world. stay motivated. Take over the world. Stay motivated. It's hard. It's hard to make posi- positive changes in your life once you've settled into a routine. But focus on meaning and purpose. Pruda recommends Think about why you're doing things. You're doing, I think, that's essential. They can start to make decisions based on what you really value in your life, basically. Yes, absolutely. So it's four things. It's the, the time that you spend on your screen, the sleep, exercise, Mediterranean, uh, diet, Mediterranean diet, and hanging out connection. more with people yeah. that you get on with. It's the same things, different research, different... Yeah. Uh, so that was it in a nutshell, those four. I'm sorry about the way I was reading, but... No, no, at but that's least just I could, you. Uh, uh, 
bring it down to four things that you have Tourette's, to remember. But you know, you mix in a bit of Tourette's in There's there. There's nothing in there, you madam. Little, little, little. Now look, my my. Thank you for that, by the way. Now my my final topic you, tonight you. is why venting when you're mad just makes things worse. Now I got to show you a picture while there on my phone. Who does that look like? Trump. Exactly, folks. You have to look at this picture. The link will be included in the show notes. There's a picture here that's on uh, that's above the actual main text, and I'm, I kid you not, it is Donald Turd Trump. Yep, orange turd. Or it really is him. Seriously, it's him. It's a better version of him, but it's him. Everything is a better version. <laughs> it's a better version. <laughs> Everything is a better Everything version. Everything is a better version. Okay, we're getting Less political same. now. All right, here we go. Um, when you're mad as hell, mad, we're all mad. Mad? Is, yeah, mad. When you're mad as hell, we're all mad. So good. This resonates with us. When you're mad as hell, <clears throat> it's a human nature to want to tell someone about it. Many work friendships have started over mutual venting about the boss. Ooh. Ooh, nice one. Yeah. But why your gut reaction may be to send uh, this guy slack to your commiserating body every time something or more likely someone pisses you off at work it's probably not going to make you feel any less peeved according to new research that took into account 154 different studies on anger venting venting isn't an effective way to get rid of anger in some cases it can actually make you even Matter. I actually agree because the more I vent about something, the more it annoys me. Yeah, yeah, of course, because you're giving it space in your head, aren't you? Yep. You're giving it space, you're giving it purpose. This doesn't mean the answer is not talking about what's making you mad. There's just a better way Dump to do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Dump it on your therapist. Dump it on your therapist. Dump it on your therapist. Yeah, that's right. In which case... I hate thing. my boss. <laughs> yeah. Which one? I don't okay. have one. I'm the boss. Yeah, you're the boss, yeah. Do we hit you? No, because uh, I cook. That's right, yeah. exactly. Wait to a man's heart. <laughs> I've got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> why anger is such a hard emotion to shake? There are a couple of reasons why it's not easy to just brush something off that makes you mad. Anger is rapid and has a strong impulse connection. It's a survival emotion. The fight in the, f- the, fight, in the fight, flight, freeze model, says Frank Frank Tews, LCSW. What is this? F, 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 Flight of Fright and the Fight of Fright. By Frank. I know, yeah. So it's all there. And he's Frank as well. It's the F word, yeah. And he's a therapist specializing in anger management. Okay. Daniel David, PhD. And he's just annoying us. Yeah, just making me mad, actually. I'm getting mad as I speak. Da- David Daniel, PhD, LCSW, a therapist at Atlanta Men's Counseling and Coaching Center, explains how anger is a protective emotion. When we feel anger... The prefrontal cortex that is more rational, thinking-based, gets hijacked. That leads to a racing heart, elevated blood pressure, and bulking up. Bulking up? Maybe I use this before they go to the gym. Should I? Oh, no. Yeah, it's a different yeah. type bulking up. Okay. Bulking Physi- up your brain. Yeah. Physi- <laughs> physically feeling the anger, he says. Historically, this response had an ev- evolutionary purpose to keep us safe. And Dr... David says anger is still a healing emotion when used correctly, but it's important to calm down first so you can think logically and not with a hijacked brain. The 154 studies on anger that the researchers analysed back this up, showing that anger increases arousal in the body. In other words, it makes you feel hyped up. Brad Bushman, PhD, a social psychologist and the study's co-author, tells GQ that the key to getting out of this anger, hyped up state, is to do something calm, calm the body down like yoga or deep breathing. Okay. Hmm? I can do that on the phone. I can yeah. earn some money on deep it. Deep breathing, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you've done it before. It was a good earner, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> How do you think I bought the house? Exactly. It's a fucking damn good earner. I'm going to try it myself. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wear my fist off your head. Okay. Dr. Bushman says that venting. He's a Bushman. Your, no. He's a Bushman. Yeah, he's a, he's a Bushman. This is a different one. This is Dr. Bushman. Dr. Bushman says that venting, on the other hand, can increase arousal. 
<laughs> Which kind of arousal are we talking about here now? God am I, the deep breathing and the arousal? I don't it's know. a bit erotic, this, is, this one, isn't it? Yeah, Stormy it's, Daniels. It's Stormy, again. oh my good God, and the picture of Trump there. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's all a bit like it's, it's on LinkedIn, it's a little bit yeah, coincidental. Yeah, his boxer shorts. Yeah. Third shirts. <laughs> You've probably experienced this firsthand, feeling that the more you talk about something pissing you off, the angrier you get. It can also lead to ruminating. I, th- I, th- I thought it said something else there. Okay, <laughs> Rheumatoid so, arthritis, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it can also lead to ruminating, dwelling on what happened, which is also unhelp- unhelpful for getting rid of anger. That's true. Venting can become habitual. Instead of dealing with the core of the anger agitation, and trying to calm down, you are allowing your brain and body to keep living in the anger state, Choose explains. How to talk about what's making you mad and actually feel better. All three experts em- emphasize that although venting and ruminating don't work for getting rid of anger, that doesn't mean you shouldn't talk about what's getting under your skin. The key is knowing how to do it. First, Dr. Davis says, to do an, an arousal decreasing activity so you don't feel so fired up. <laughs> this might look like going for a walk or to- taking a few deep breaths, feeling camera. Yeah, now you're ready to talk. Figure out the best person to talk to. When you talk to about what's making you mad matters, who you, sorry, who you talk to is what makes you, what's what matters. Dr. David recommends avoiding someone who is just going to agree with you. Offering up, well, that's definitely, yeah, too many yes people out there. Who's going to agree with you? Yes. Offering up little more than saying, yeah, I'd like, I, I'm a bit mad too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we all know people like that. You want to talk to someone who can give you feedback and offer a different perspective on the situation. It's not as bad as talking to someone you're mad and they actually will fire you up even more. It will piss you off even more. Dr. David says, go to someone who has a vested interest in you and who can help you figure out what you're overthinking. Like a therapist, you'll have to pay him for it. Yeah, that's right, yeah. (laughs) Like promoting therapists. To the the roof. (laughs) Figure out what if you're overthinking, what happened, or if there are some other factors you need to consider. Figure out what happened to piss you off. Letting go of anger requires getting a little introspective. Tews and Dr. David both say that sometimes whatever sets you off is connected to a deeper emotional hurt. When used correctly, anger is a healing emotion. It's like a big neon sign with an arrow that says, I've been hurt. Sometimes people say or do things that poke that pain and men react. Anger makes us feel stronger and says, back off, leave me alone. Dr. David says, recognizing the deeper pain, he says, it's part of healing and can lead to feeling less angry. It may sound simple, but the whole name to it, tame, the whole, sorry, but the whole name it to tame it practice is scientifically shown to help people move on from anger. So that's the scientifically shown term. It's name it to tame it, not name it to shame it, but name it to tame it. Okay. Right. Okay. Maybe it's not that deep. God, these maybe are tongue some, twisters, no? Randy, wow. Maybe someone you maybe someone cut you off in a traffic and it just really pissed you off. Road rage. Oh, but I, maybe I don't have road rage ever. It's because you don't drive. I do drive. I see you around the I bend. See, I see. Well, that's it. That's what pisses me off. <laughs> yeah, see? And by the way, you do have road rage. I've seen you in the passenger seat. But maybe an ins- but maybe but maybe <laughs> maybe an insult someone hurled hurled you away, a text going unresponded to, or something else that happened hit a nerve because it's connected to a past experience, it's worth considering. Number three, determine if it's a problem you can solve. When talking through your anger, Dr. Bushman says to consider if your feelings can be used as a motivator to solve a problem. He points out that Every social movement throughout history, women's rights, Black Lives Matter, we could go on, was fueled by anger. True? Use the person you're talking to as a sounding board for possible ways you could use your anger for good. Maybe you're angry that your workplace doesn't have a good paternity leave policy or the playground you take your kid to every weekend is littered with kids. Sorry, trash. <laughs> <laughs> you're angry. So... So, so what are you going to do about it? Sometimes the answer is nothing, but sometimes it's not. Not all sources of anger are problems that can be solved. In cases like these, Dr. David says the best way to get rid of Pick anger is... Pick up the trash and put in the bin. Just punch someone in the face, I think, sometimes. That helps me. 
Oh no, I'd, I'd pick up the trash and start putting it in the bin. I feel much better. I've seen you, that's what that's what you were doing, dragging Pedro out the other day by the legs. Oh dear, yeah, yeah, but um, it but didn't work of, actually because no, he came back. Recycling you, <laughs> 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 just recycle them and send them back. Exactly. He, yeah. God. Worse and worse and worse version of himself. Okay, just accept it for what it is right now, he says. This, he says, is where the arousal decrease in the activities like deep breathing can be helpful because it's hard to practice radical <laughs> acceptance when your heart is racing and blood pressure is skyrocketing. Number four, reframe how you set the situation. Reframing what happened is another scientifically backed way to get rid of anger. Dr. Bushman says... He notes that one way to do this is by taking a step back and thinking about the bigger picture instead of focusing on the sole source of your anger. This is when having someone talk to can be helpful because they can offer up different per- perspectives or help help you see that maybe what happened isn't as big a deal as you think. And if it is a big deal, they can help you figure out what to do about it. Talking about your anger is a productive way. It is, Productive way isn't always easy. It can be hard to find objective people to talk to. It's uncomfortable acknowledging pain pines when you've kept when you've kept hidden. It's hard to break the ha- the hardwired emotions of being quick to anger. In all these cases, the experts say that cognitive behavioral therapy (CBT) can help identify certain triggers and teach effective responses to them. There's a difference, Dr. Bushman says, between talking about anger in an attempt to understand it and seek a solution and talking about your anger just to get rid of off your chest. The latter is not healthy. So first calm yourself down. Calm down, boy. Calm yourself down and then talk about what's pissing you off with purpose. It's good, actually, this. Um, no, as I say, fuck that. Just take the gloves off. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, honestly... I don't know about the talking bit, but honestly, when you do take, the, what I do is I take a deep breath, count to four, hold it for four, and then release whenever I'm really stressed out. And it seems to help me. I do mm-hmm. it a few times, mm-hmm. eight eight times is my lucky number. So uh, I find that that kind of settles my brain again and I can start rethinking. Yeah. Well, in a way, it's what this, what this the, the last point is here, what it's called, which is reframing. Yeah. That is what you're just talking about there. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's a method of, method of you've obviously devised for yourself, and you, you find works for you a coping method. I've got a I've got a horrible um, uh, half an I've got half an hour before I, I I deal with one of the tough things in my life. I'm off to the dentist, mm. and I actually um, I don't like this dentist of mine. And I usually have no issues with dentists. What's wrong with Paul? He's a very good No, no, aspect. Paul's a really good dentist and my best friend. But no, I'm talking about this dentist because Paul's retired. And and I mean, every time I go there, he says, I want to take an impression of that tooth again. And I, I think he's got so many impressions. <laughs> I've impressed him a lot. I think he- what is that? That's time to go. Okay, bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, India, for next one. See you soon. Well, folks, on that note, that's where we're going to leave it for today. Hope you've enjoyed the show as much as we have. And we look forward to bringing you more of the latest news and hot topics surrounding mental health on our next show. Remember, new episodes of the Mad Podcast drop every every Sunday Sunday at 6 p.m. Episodes are available to listen to on Spotify, Apple Music and, of course, the Musicians Against Depression website, an online toolbox that contains a wealth of information essential reading and links relating to mental health. As always, if you or someone you know would like to join the conversation, either in studio or remotely, email us at musiciansagainstdepression at gmail.com or visit the MAD website at www.musiciansagainstdepression.uk for further info. All links, including social media, are provided in the show notes. And remember, No problem in life is insurmountable and help is just a conversation away. Until the next time, from myself and the wonderful Indira, take take care. care.